we have a relatively boring Pac-Man game because nothing really ever happens. We have a Pac-Man, a line, we can resize the window, but the Pac-Man doesn't actually move. So what I'd like to do now is to have the Pac-Man follow the mouse so that we can place the Pac-Man with the mouse. So we have to handle interactions with the mouse. Let's go to Game Canvas now. And here we have a place where we draw our Pac-Man and we place it at position 10, 10 and we make it 50 by 50 pixels in diameter. Now instead of placing it at the fixed position, I'd like to introduce a variable private int pacman x, private int pacman y, and then use this variable here. Now, this, this position here is the position of the top left corner. So I actually would like to store the center of the pacman in pacman x and pacman y. So I need to say pacman x minus the radius of the Pac-Man, which is 25, Pac-Man y minus the radius is 25. Okay, so now I have a variable which is the position of the Pac-Man and I could change that variable and the Pac-Man would be at a different place. Uh, I don't really like this use of 25 and 50 down here, so let's create a constant up here, private static final int Pac-Man radius equals 25 pixels and then let's use pacman radius here pacman radius and here too and here also it's two times pacman radius and the same for the height of this two times pacman radius okay so if you run it now there will be nothing new it's just that we have a variable which we can change to position the Pac-Man somewhere else. Now the variable is initialized to 0, 0 uh, because that's the default value of an int variable. Well, let's create a constructor so we can do that a bit cleaner. Public game canvas Pac-Man x because let's say we place it at 100 Pac-Man y 100 like this. So Pac-Man starts out at position 100, 100 and we can compile this the whole program and launch it again and our Pac-Man is now a bit further down and to the right, 100, 100. Now we would like the Pac-Man to actually be placeable with the mouse. To do that we have to respond to mouse events and we can do that by registering a listener. In particular, a mouse listener. So we can ask this game canvas, hey you, whenever there is a mouse event occurring over this canvas, notify this object, this listener object. And we do that by saying add mouse listener. And here we provide an object that implements the mouse listener interface and methods on that object will be called whenever the mouse moves around, clicks, whatever happens, something over this game canvas component. So let's create again an anonymous inner class, new mouse listener, that implements this mouse listener interface. Now the mouse listener interface consists of more than just a single method. Namely, we have a method mouse pressed that receives a mouse event with more information on what happened exactly. And besides that, we have some other methods too. Now let's, for uh, debugging purposes here, let's print out print line pressed and let's also print the thread plus thread current thread. Okay. Now we have other methods in the mouse listener interface and we need to implement all of them here. Mouse released, clicked, entered and exited. So released, released, clicked, clicked, entered, 
entered and exited. Okay. So now, whenever something happens with the mouse over this, then our um, console will print, press, release, clicked, entered, or exited. Now what I would like to do is whenever we press the mouse button, which means we press it down, it's not clicking, it's just pressing it down. As soon as we finish pressing it down, before we let go, um, we would like to move the Pac-Man to the current position. So I would like to say Pac-Man X equals the current X position of the mouse. And that position we can retrieve from the event. We can ask the event and say, give me the X coordinate of the mouse cursor at the point where the button was pressed. And the same with Pac-Man Y equals ev.getY, like this. We compile this and we run the application. We should now be able, first of all, when I move the mouse, well, not really, I don't see anything here on the right, but when I move the mouse out of my component, poof, I get mouse exited. When I move it back in, poof, I get mouse entered. And now let me press the button. When I press down the button, the Pac-Man should jump to the current position. And I see pressed in the console, but the Pac-Man doesn't jump. If I let go, I see released and clicked. It's because I press and release at the same position, it also generates a click event. If I press, move over and release somewhere else, I get only the released and no click. So mouse clicks is push down, let go at the same position. But what's strange is our Pac-Man doesn't actually get moved, right? We also see that we don't see any paint component entry in our lock. That's because how could this thing know that the component needs to be repainted? Nobody tells it. So if we repaint the component, for example, by making it a bit bigger, which we know from the past will cause paint component to be executed, the Pac-Man should appear at the new position. Poof. So we can place it down here and then also again resize. Poof. Okay. So that's a bit annoying. We would like it to actually appear there immediately when we click. And we can do that. It's very simple. After we change the state of our model, we change the position of the Pac-Man, we want to trigger a call to repay, uh, a call to paint components. So we want this code to execute. We must not call this method though. We call swing and we ask it to please repaint this component at some time in the future. Usually it's very quick. But if you call repaint a million times right after each other, repaint, 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 Swing will actually coalesce those calls and perform a single call to paint component. So it's optimizing things for us. Also, we'll get the graphics object that we need for the paint component call. So always when you change the model such that the GUI would have to change, you just call repaint in the GUI and that will take care of calling paint component at the right time. Okay, so let's check now whenever we click, 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 we can move the Pac-Man. Now we would like the Pac-Man to actually follow our mouse. Instead of us having to click, we would like the Pac-Man to always be right underneath our mouse cursor. We can do that. There's another listener called a mouse motion listener. Add mouse motion listener, new mouse motion listener, which is the kind of listener that can listen to mouse moves. So let's copy one of those here because it's very similar. Mouse moved, moved, and instead of when mouse is pressed, we want to move the pack when, when the mouse is moved. Mouse motion listener has a second method, public void mouse dragged. So mouse dragged is called when I'm moving the mouse while holding the mouse button pressed. You can see that right now. We also need to import the mouse motion, list, motion listener interface. Oh, we already have it here. Good. 
compile everything, run, and now I'm moving the mouse, I don't press or anything, and it's just nicely updating the Pac-Man. When I'm dragging the mouse, so I press down the key and I move, I see dragged messages in the console, but the Pac-Man does not move. And when I let go again, I see released, and now I have moved and repaid. I could say I only want to have the dragging, so I'll go and I'll move my code here to dragged, and so now I can drag the Pac-Man around, and it won't just follow me blindly, but I have to actually click the mouse and then it's dragging. It's not drag and drop, so I don't have to be on the Pac-Man to drag it, it's just whenever I press down the button and start to drag, the Pac-Man jumps where I am. Okay, there's one last thing I would like to do, clean this up a little bit. We have a lot of those methods here and they're all kind of useless. So I actually can use instead of mouse listener here, which is an interface which requires me to implement all of those methods, I can use a class adapter, which is a class that implements the mouse listener interface and all the methods of the mouse adapter class, they just do nothing. They're empty methods. And so here I can override only what I really want. For example, I only want to print something when mouse pressed happens. Same here, mouse motion adapter, I think it is, we'll see. Mouse moved I don't care about, so I don't actually need to implement it because the mouse motion adapter already does it. I think it's actually mouse adapter too. Let's import this mouse adapter Compile mouse motion adapter. Let's see whether mouse motion adapter actually exists. Maybe it's also just mouse adapter. Mouse motion adapter. Oh, it exists. Okay, so this should be it. We've basically simplified our code here. In fact, we don't really need to have this mouse listener anymore because all we do is lock something to the console, but I'll leave it here. Let's check. It should still have the same behavior. I click and it moves the Pac-Man around. 